CJ Steel with a slow fade. Welcome one, welcome all. Hello, hello. Hi, Jess. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hey, Alexi. Hey, Alexi. It's hump day. It's halfway through the week. Feeling it? Feeling love. <laughs> hey, Brody. Hey, Sammy. Hey there. How are you? Good, good. Hey, Pia. Hey, Christy. See you on chat. Hey, hey. All right. So, um, we don't have to, uh, to wait. We've got, um, if nobody minds, and I hope you got the notification up front that, um, the session's being recorded. So you would have gotten to acknowledge that and, uh, all that sort of thing. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Alexi to kick us off. How's that sound? Yes, that sounds good. Um, and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, it is my very first time co-hosting uh, a meetup. So um, I pro probably need to excuse uh, my dog. It might uh, raise the voice from time to time. I'm just, just only one in the room and the dog as well um so welcome everyone uh it's been quite an interesting couple of months while we're developing uh the program together with jacob and i'm uh so eager to present it to a, a wider audience uh to um um probably um uh share the the uh the journey and my experience and and uh share my passion and and um, um uh get an opportunity to give back to community uh for what i was having from community uh so um i think we can uh get going and um we um jason can you um share some um um agenda items and 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 i think we've prepared quite an interesting intro for 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 this meetup perfect thank you thank you so yes um three things you must consider when seeking your mentor and the agenda items we're going to go through is um why would you want to join a mentoring program why wouldn't you why wouldn't you want to join a mentoring program um the, look at the uh, the different benefits, whether that's from a mentor's point of view, a mentee's point of view, the community itself, like contributing back to the community. Go through those three magical powers of uh, considerations when selecting the right mentor. Alexi will take us through avoiding the pitfalls and what uh, good looks like. And um, we'll go through um, how to participate in the program itself um, by going through some demonstrations and case studies uh, demonstration on how to register if you'd like to become a mentee or a mentor or if you just want to stay across this program as we start to uh, develop it over time so quite um, the experimental kind of approach to implementing this and um, uh, really wanted to take that um, uh, the iterative sort of approach to it. So we want to take the first cohort through, uh, see how it goes, respond to feedback, and um, start to develop um, the program um, quarter by quarter almost, you know, uh, three months at a time. Um, so why haven't people taken up the opportunity to um, be involved in a mentoring partnership before? What I thought I might do is, um, uh, get you guys to put M in the chat if you've had a mentor before. So just type in M 
whether it's successful or not successful, um, you probably had some experiences, I'd imagine. And um, yes, let's have a look. One of the questions when um, looking at uh, kicking this off as part of a, um, a meetup was to ask you guys a question when you were registering. Um, what sort of challenges have you faced in the past when trying to select a mentor or a coach? And um, you guys come up with some really interesting and uh, interesting but not surprising sort of responses, to be honest. Um, so some of those responses I've got on screen here. So um, let you read through that. But I guess overall, no matter where you are in your personal development plan or where you want to get to uh, as part of your career in the agile world or otherwise, um, I think you could probably almost relate to a lot of these concepts. There's a few themes coming through, you know, not, not knowing who to go to, um, not knowing how to approach somebody that you, you may go, oh, they'd make a great mentor, but how do I actually talk to them? How do I introduce myself to that concept and how do I uh, create some confidence around knowing that they're going to want to spend time with me. Um, you know, that's all very important stuff, you know, fear of rejection. I love this one. And it came with an emoji as well. So I left it in there, the stupid brain. <laughs> it's like gets to you if you, if you overthink it. Um, so we want to make this experience a little bit different, um, to any of these sorts of past experiences and just say, you are. 100% worth it. You don't have to worry about a fear of rejection because you're coming into this knowing that people that are involved from a mentor point of view want to be there. Right, so you don't have to worry. Awesome. Let's have a look. What do we got next? So let's talk about if you wanted to become a mentor. What are some of the benefits for you? First of all, um, you get the opportunity to increase your professional visibility. You're putting yourself out there. If you haven't been a mentor before, but you would like to be a mentor, you think you've got what it takes. Um, you want to give it a go in a safe environment. Um, know that you're going to have the opportunity of increasing the visibility of your professional um, uh, life. You're also going to benefit from getting respect from your peers, um, knowing that you're giving back your time to nurturing the growth of others, um, that you're going to be contributing to something that's greater than yourself. Um, one of the great things about being a mentor that I've found is that you get the opportunity to put into practice your leadership, your communication style, um, your ability to provide effective feedback and build relationships with people that you don't necessarily know right now. Um, through that, you're going to be able to expand your, expand your network as well, which is fantastic. Um, the things that you've experienced before are probably things that other people want to leverage. So you're going to be able to provide a skill transfer um, and get a greater level of experience for yourself um, through practicing the sharing of that information. Um, which you don't get if you don't talk out loud. <laughs> and you may think it, but you don't get the opportunity to practice it. Um, who knows? You may learn some new stuff too, because your mentee might be able to reflect on things that they've experienced that you haven't. Um, and uh, let's last but not least is the boost of confidence that you actually get through the empowerment of sharing your experience with others and empowering them to do better and greater things. Alexi. Um, thank you, Jason. Uh, it's it's a mutual relationships uh, uh, which uh, are beneficial for uh, both mentors and mentees and even for the community. We will get to that uh, a bit later. But uh, I can pretty much speak from my personal experience and, and you can see that um, there are heaps of benefits essentially, like uh, um, be able to uh, cultivate various of skills and knowledge and, and get uh, uh, a better understanding how to build better work and life balance, uh, how to improve your communications and your personal skills 
and uh, knowledge of uh, um, organizational environments around you, which uh, mentors can share with you from their experience. So it, it is kind of close to what mentors get in, like you will be expanding your professional network. And through the program, you can, you can work with multiple mentors, not just with one mentor and get um, all sorts of knowledge and all sorts of experience uh, uh, and uh, improve your understanding what you even really want from your career. So uh, it will improve your professional profile and, and uh, give you a uh, confidential space to discuss even in even workplace issues. So with, with the experienced people, you can talk it through and, and you can share your experience and get um, very interesting and, and helpful uh, advices how to navigate through these uh, difficult situations. Um, and uh, uh, you will support, uh, you will uh, receive the supporting guidance uh, and achieving your career aspiration. It's one of the goals of the program to uh, help mentees uh, to uh, get uh, uh, an advice in, in terms of uh, uh, career pathways and, and how to uh, get there, get to the point uh, and mentees wants to, to reach essentially. Um, it give it can give you all sorts of insights on organizational culture and um, facilitate smooth integration and growth. Um, because for some people, like uh, myself, coming to Australia and being bo raised, uh, born and raised in different environment, it's yeah. it's not that easy to navigate a very new uh, environment, a, a new office and and uh, uh, workspace culture. Um, with building professional network, you can get much more opportunities comparing not having a mental relationship and, and uh, you'll be able to foster not just professional uh, development, but the personal development as well. And and it's pretty much the same as for, for mentors. Uh, uh, um, um, working within the safe environment uh, with people supporting you, you, you will essentially grow your self-confidence and self-esteem. And um, yeah, you will better understand what you really want. Okay, and in terms of community, um, it's yeah quite an interesting benefit as you can see. Uh, it's uh, um, some sort of diversity, sharing knowledge and, and growing community and passage even kind of generational kind of knowledge. Uh, that's what we, we, we can achieve here from running the program within the community. So mixing experienced and new agile practitioners, you can uh, achieve uh, um, smooth transfer of uh, foundational, foundational and latest practices uh, um, learned from, from uh, recent experience. And as, as we know, the agile space is always evolving. There is always something new to learn and have this um, and pumping people to each other will essentially uh, uh, speed up the, the uh, sharing of uh, the knowledge. It will also um, um, solidify the sense of belonging. So you, you, you'll find a supportive community where you will feel uh, belonging and, and you will feel supported as well. Um, so um, it will elevate uh, at, uh, the overall standards and quality of work within the whole community with sharing knowledge between more people and sharing it within uh, a, 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 a structured framework and in a supportive environment. So it will also attract new professionals uh, joining the community. So the community will grow and, and strive. Um, uh, it will uh, promote agile mindset, mindset and, and instill and reinforce values of uh, agile, which is, um, yeah, you can read it. Uh, <laughs> From from the from the uh, from the principles and the, from the scrum book, but practicing it and sharing uh, uh, the experience and and uh, have an access for to wider experience is essentially a, a much better way to to get it uh, um, elaborated and and having it as your uh, own tool set and ready to use at your uh, own work or place essentially. Um, so ensuring that knowledge is continuously passed so the community will grow and, and the relevant stay, stay relevant uh, to the modern standards and to the uh, modern practices. And today's mentees, they can become tomorrow's mentors. 
So that's another benefit for the community to to stay going, to stay relevant, and continuing through uh, through uh, the years. I think it's worth trying. <laughs> Over to you, Jason. You and your Jason. Go on mute. Yeah. Um, thanks, buddy. I was just um, reflecting on um, on some examples of um, mentoring situations that I've been in before, and I can certainly think of times where I thought, "Oh, there's there's going to be somebody out there that I can leverage a particular skill set from, or some form of experience. They're they're doing something that." I've wanted to get into, but don't know how to crack into it. And sometimes um, we kind of go, oh, I, I know that that's what I want, but how do I start? Where do I get started? How do I, how do I know what to ask for even, you know? Um, have you guys had any experiences, uh, comical or otherwise, that, um, that you'd like to, to share in regards to mentoring practices or uh, mentors that you've approached in the past? It could be a manager who you sought mentoring from. It could be a, one of your leaders that you've, you've looked at, uh, looked to for coaching even. I remember what I'll share one just to get things started. I remember once um, watching uh, a peer manager who was a team leader. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, sometimes when uh, you've got people in your team and, and it's, it's time for, it's time for them to, to move on. Like you've invested a lot of time and you've invested a lot of effort in that, in, in that person, but they, they're just clearly not invested in where they are right now. And perhaps maybe the best thing for them is, is actually to look outside of the organization they're in. And I've certainly been in that boat myself. I get to a particular level or a particular point in time, and then it's time to move on. Unfortunately, this team leader took the approach of it's back in the day when there used to be these books. I don't know if, um, if everyone remembers the white pages or the yellow pages and they'd, they plonk the yellow page down on the person's desk to say, you know, hint, hint. That's pretty bad uh, mentoring or leadership type of experience. Um, any <laughs> any others <laughs> in there? Yeah, I think what you're touching on is how different people's managerial styles. Yeah. I've dealt with lots of different managers over my time and some people – um, you know, we like your best mate. Uh, others will be more closed off and um, even, I don't want to say abusive, but um, yeah, I mean, back in the day, I think things have changed a little bit. I hope things have changed, but yeah, some some people can be pretty rough. Yeah, yeah. And we certainly don't we certainly don't want want those sorts of experiences moving forward. We want to we want to create the future that we want for the next generations, right? Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Luke. Yeah, I can't think of an example off the top of my head. Maybe next meeting. Yeah, <laughs> I sure, have sure. lots of stories. <laughs> yeah. Sounds uh, good. Probably a couple of examples. Um, an anti mentor. So you were talking about your manager before. There was one place I started working out of a government agency, and uh, at the end of the first day, my manager said, um, Oh, come on, I'll show you how you can look up uh, who people have been calling and talking to. During the day, big brother. <laughs> Wait, wasting time. <laughs> I was like, whoa, what the hell have I got myself into? So it was, um, it was a really bad example. But um, but a good one was um, I had a scrum master reporting to me at one stage and I learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was, uh, he was a Russian guy that's passed away since from cancer. But, um, but he, was, he was just extraordinary. And that was um, he was a guy who sort of got me hooked on scrum and agile. I was like, what the hell is this? This is not the management or leadership style that I've seen in the past. And um, it was absolutely brilliant. So um, he's my my standard. Yeah. So cool. not an Alexi, but he was an Alex, Alex Ivanov. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I probably have an example then. My recent project, the lead, I'm pretty new to the IT industry. And um, the lead that I was working with was new to the company. And she came in and 
Um, she's way more senior than me, been in the industry for 15 years. And she still took the time to help me learn and, um, you know, took my opinions and considered them. And we worked together to um, deliver su successfully. I think that's a good example of a, you know, a good mentor. She's, I still talk to her pretty much every day. So awesome. That sounds like a great experience. Yeah. Pretty lucky there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for me, the secret sauce in finding the right mentor comes down to three things. Um, setting yourself clear objective objectives so that you can create alignment. Um, if you don't know what it is that you're after in terms of um, return for effort, like why are you actually approaching this person? What is it that you want to learn? For instance, um, then it's going to be hard for you to align on that if you're not really super clear. Um, having identified somebody that's got the relevant um, relevance and expertise to the areas that you want to develop in is really important, not loosely, but like specifically. Um, and also, um, if you can take things like availability and commitment off the table, knowing um, full well that you've got that availability, you've got a certain amount of time that you can spend with them. They're not rushed. They're not going to sort of come in quickly and or turn up, turn up, turn up late and finish early or anything like that. It's, you know, you're going to take the time that's necessary to get the job done. Um, these are, these are key things. So um, when I look at the clear objectives and alignment, thinking about things like um, making sure that you've got um, really, really if, um, clear objectives so that you know what you want to achieve through the mentorship. Um, so that if you can even know that you can put a, a peg in the sand into the future to say, these are the types of things that I'm um, looking to achieve, even if along the way you find that it's not actually still accurate, that's okay because you can pivot at that point in time, but it's harder if you're wishy-washy about the type of guidance that you're looking for. Um, you want to come prepared as a mentee to a mentoring session to understand what are the key, uh, what's the key agenda or what's the key items that you're wanting to, to discuss uh, during a particular session. So you want to make sure that not only your objective is clear, but um, use things like time boxing to make sure that you get through all the goals that you want to get through. Um, being really clear on on the objectives helps to understand, you know, the, the term uh, a problem well defined is a problem half solved. Um, you know, so being clear on that um, so that um, you can ask questions to clarify and the mentor can ask questions of you to clarify that you both are on the same page, not only on the same page, but actually reading from the same book. <laughs> um, having uh, clear objectives gives you ability to measure your progress towards that goal as well, which is awesome. And you're wanting to make sure that you're showing as much accountability as what the mentor is going to expect from you as well. Okay. Um, when we look at the next one, uh, what we got there, relevance and experience. So when you're selecting the, the right mentor for you, based on the types of things that you're wanting to get from them, uh, the experiences, the building of the relationship, etc. You're wanting as much practical insights and advice as you are theoretical, right? So ask the right questions. Um, make just like we do in everything in the agile world, we want fast feedback cycles, right? So make the things small enough that you can actually know that your learning curve is going to be shorter because you're learning smaller bites of things. So your clear objectives also small. Um, you want to make sure that you're getting the um, the the way I look at this one, the customized guidance. I think of this as being not only do you want the practical advice, the experience from the, the mentor um, in terms of how they've actually done it, but you actually want a mentor that is going to share with you information and knowledge the way that you consume it, 
Right. So you you want to uh, you want to know that the person that you're partnering with for a mentoring relationship is going to know how to communicate with you, know what makes you tick, know how to get the message through, know how to extract the information from you or extract the wisdoms from you. Um, it's always good if your mentor has got credibility uh, in the marketplace as well. Um, and that they are in the same circles as you want to be in uh, uh, as well. So from a networking and connections point of view, um, that's why I really like this this concept that uh, Alexi's come up with around the agile um, professionals um, that this um, mentoring program is targeting is um, is specifically within the network and with the connections that are really relevant to that specific type of learning. And I guess you want that person to also be inspiring and uh, uh, not only talking the talk, but walking the walk as well. And the third thing in terms of availability and commitment, um, you wanting that regular interaction with them. It's not forced, it's planned, it's people turn up on time, you're getting that real time feedback from them. Uh, you're as much accountable for your own outcomes as your mentor will make you accountable. Um, your, um, if you know, as I say, having a longer term goal in mind and putting that peg in the sand to say, this is where I'm heading, this is my clear goal. Um, but you know, you may have discovered something like a, an aha moment where you go, Oh, I didn't know that's how it worked. Now I want to learn this bit and you can really focus in and, and adapt to the changes in, uh, in what it is that you want to learn and that you're creating that positive learning environment to be able to pivot if you need to as well. Fantastic. I reckon it's back over to you, Alexi, I think. Um, yes, thank you, Jason. So um, uh, while designing the problem, we were um, uh, looking at the uh, uh, practices and, and looking at uh, the programs which uh, already have been uh, uh, run before us. And we found that there might be some interesting uh, uh, things worth mentioning in terms of avoiding them, essentially. So you can see there are kind of uh, several pitfalls which might be happening uh, with, within those relationships. So like uh, for uh, meetings, uh, essentially, it's it's always tricky to... Uh, um, to, to, to get uh, uh, meetings organized in the right way. And, and uh, it's uh, um, a matter of uh, mentees showing commitment and, and uh, uh, initiative and uh, mentors responding accordingly. So you can see that uh, um, it's up to mentees to drive the process. Uh, and if uh, something is not uh, working quite completely and if uh, rescheduling, for example, uh, required. So we just need to keep rescheduling. So it's no one's fault that, that mentors are busy and they're busy uh, people, but they are also committed to the program. So that's why you just, just need to keep trying and, and find the right way and right time and right place. Uh, and, and it's for, for mentees uh, uh, to organize this uh, uh, and provide multiple alternatives to, to get uh, the meetings happening. Um, in terms of the uh, advices or etiquettes for mentors, it's it might be uh, like a like a probably knee jerk reaction to jump straight away to solution, rather trying to guide mentees through the thinking process through um, um, liberation of uh, uh, different options and making this uh, um, solution being born essentially within the mutual uh, relationships. And with the um, mentoring approach, it's pretty much a regular approach for, for mentors. So it's uh, about problem solving process. It's about showing mentees bigger pictures using, using uh, that uh, wide and, and uh, deep uh, mentors experience, uh, which they uh, acquired through their life. 
And sometimes it's even worth uh, playing devil's advocate to uh, find uh, an alternative uh, point of view and 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 earth something which haven't been considered and haven't been sought through. So um, yeah, it's some of the uh, some of the practical advice for for people willing to to take the journey. Okay, so um, uh, in terms of joining programs, so we've uh, decided to uh, um, design it in a way uh, that there will be tools. So essentially, we, we will do in a demo just just uh, very soon, and you can see that it's pretty much a straightforward process. So you can uh, go through the page with the information. There will be uh, playbook uh, attached to the page so you can see pretty much all uh, um, benefits and all the pitfalls and some additional and program structure uh, outlined in the in the playbook um, so you can go through the enrolling process there are a couple of forms uh, one for mentors and one for mentee and then uh, we will um, match, match you guys based on the uh, preferences you you've outlined in your forms and then uh, you'll meet your mentor uh, as a mentee and mentors can meet uh, their mentees and, and start working uh, on, on the goals. Uh, the first meeting is very important. There is a whole big section in the, in the playbook uh, with, with the guidance and with the tips how to organize the first meeting, how to set it uh, 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 and start it from the right foot. Yeah, and, and uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, all set through and outlined in the playbook. Right. Should we move on to the next slide? Yes, that's the demo part. The right. demo part? Okie dokie. I brought this over here because in uh, the website, and sorry, I've started off down the bottom. So we've got the Mentor Beacon program here. Um, collaboration between the uh, Agile communities in Adelaide. Um, but as you can see, we've got a few people from all over the country that are that have joined us. And um, so there's there's all sorts of options. There's um, information on how it works. Um, the uh, there's a privacy policy which you can open up and and read if you're curious as to how we're using information because we're asking you to fill out forms and that sort of thing. Um, there's a program playbook, um, which uh, shows you everything that you need to know. The, the web page itself is um, simply just a summary of, of those things. Um, the program team at the moment is Alexi and I. Um, so we're going very much an MVP approach for this first cohort, um, but we welcome people who want to um, opt into being part of the program team in the future as well. If you're enjoying it and you're getting the benefits that you're that you're looking forward to, um, and we've got here a section on the current um, people who have registered for um, uh, for being a mentor uh, in the first cohort. So. Um, I just wanted to show you what the playbook looks like so you can download it if you wanted to. Um, you can open it up in, in PDF as well. And it's got uh, roles and responsibilities and program structure and how to build the relationship and how to set up the first meeting as Alexi pointed out, et cetera, et cetera. So there's lots of great information in there. Um, and this is our first cohort of mentors. So you can see there's quite a few people that have volunteered their time to be mentors and we've got at least three people on the call, four people on the call who, who have volunteered. Um, and yeah, not everybody could make it tonight, but they, that doesn't uh, curb their enthusiasm to be part of the process either. Um, down the bottom of the website, we've got how to enroll to be a mentor. So that will take you to a form um, to fill out quite simple and straightforward. Um, these are pre-populated because these are kind of like the, I won't say non-negotiables, but the, these are the, the standard set that we want to make sure that everybody understands what they're signing up for. So kind of highlighting it uh, for them. Um, so if you wanted to become a mentor, you can enroll here. 
um, show you how many mentees that you can commit to. We're looking at a minimum of one hour per month um, to meet with uh, your mentoring partner. Um, a bit of talk about your previous experience, how you want to communicate, um, how long you've been an agile practitioner, different industries you've been involved in, different roles you've been involved in, and then different contribution areas in terms of professional development um, that you can show as a mentor to your, to your mentee. Very similar form for mentee, it's just the opposite way around. So we want to collect all the same sort of information, um, but we also want to um, uh, take it from the perspective of what are the focus areas that you want to learn so that we can match you up with a mentor. What else is on here, Alexi? I wonder. Um, oh, there's a Slack channel, so you can join the Slack channel, um, which takes you through here to Mentor Beacon as a Slack channel. Um, if you just want to keep up to date with any, like you don't sign up this time around, but you want to keep across stuff and maybe you'll sign up in a future cohort or something like that, um, mm -hmm. then you can keep across information here, no obligations or anything like that. There's no cost to this either, by the way, guys. So, you know, there's not going to be hit up for anything <laughs> along the way. This is a, this is a, a contribution back to the community. Um, so um yeah so if you're not ready to enroll just yet either as a mentee or a mentor that's okay um you can just join the mailing list to keep up to date on on that as well which will take you to a different form well, it's over here very simple just an email capture form and yeah um we want this program to be uh, quite self-led to be honest um so we, we'll do the we'll do the lifting in terms of to begin with on on matching people and we want to get feedback from the from the experience to make future cohorts better and better as time goes on and who knows you know you may start off as a mentee now but you may be tomorrow's mentor um as part of even the program team if that's what you want to do um you're very welcome to use this as a learning ground for whatever it is you want to achieve from a prof professional development point of view. What else am I missing? Um, we are going to collect some feedback in a true agile meta. So uh, the idea to have uh, cohorts is just to get starting and finishing point and, and have the way to celebrate our achievements and, and collect some uh, statistics potentially and share it. That's, a, that's a, one of the purposes of uh, joining the uh, uh, mailing list. That's you. If you're not ready yet, you can see how it's progressing and, and what uh, uh, probably we can even collect some testimonials from people participating in the program. That's the regular way to, to uh, show the value and attract more people. Uh, as you probably guys uh, have some experience within the marketing. And um, um, the, uh, uh, the workspace, the, the space in, in Slack is also can be used to uh, engage with other people within cohort and within the multiple cohorts and talk through some and drop some questions, drop some news, some important, interesting stuff there. Just another um, touch point, a contact point between uh, um, group of mentors and mentees um, and um, yeah that's uh, essentially our uh, first MVP version the first cohort and and uh, as, as um, uh, Jason mentioned there is uh, no cost assigned to that it's pretty much given up to given back to community and and making people bumping each other more often and make community more uh, more dense and more uh, tightly knit and, and improve the quality of the community itself. Awesome. Well, um, we are pretty much towards the end there. Would you guys like me to include the links to the forms in the chat so that you could always save those across? Might be, yep, thumbs up, cool. All right, let me do that. Thank uh, you, Jason. Someone... And yeah, just just probably a quick note. So um, I think we we're kind of uh, planning to uh, get through the uh, um, through the case, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's uh, um, uh, pretty much following the the approach. Uh, 
practice what you teach. So I've uh, approached Jason and I haven't, I was having a couple of uh, things uh, in my mind. So one of the things was the program you can see we've developed together in a truly agile, agile manner. So we were kind of having uh, catch-ups um, at some point, even uh, once uh, uh, per every next week. And we're discussing the way how to design the program. And we have this discussion within uh, uh, the Slack channel. Uh, uh, it was pretty much DM messages at that uh, stage, but it was helping us to progress through the uh, steps to prepare this program. And another thing which I've uh, got through that cohort zero, that's how it called it, essentially, to, to get um, invaluable help from Jason, who used to be uh, working for uh, Gede Group for Discovery Parks. And, and he helped me very much to to get uh, some very valuable insights to find my next place and and uh, get the position of scrum master so that's another benefit and that's the real demonstration of the of the power of the program of the connections and uh, probably for people living in italy you can truly appreciate and understand how important to have uh, your network as wide as possible that's that's my experience guys that's wonderful and and i guess from my perspective as well um what i found really energizing um was uh, alexi's passion and persistence to wanting to do something um and and um helping community in between jobs even you know and um uh, i think um that's what spurred me on as well as watching the enthusiasm that you had uh, as part of that process. So that's why I wanted to see it through. And this is just the beginning. <laughs> Okie dokie. Any questions, guys, uh, from a program point of view or anything else um, that we've covered today? Uh, <clears throat> I'm just completing the form for mentee. Um, yeah, I'm pretty new to the agile space and being dropped in the deep end as a scrum master. So I'm learning pretty fast on my, you know, moving on my feet and all that. Um, I think I'll just fill it out with no experience, even though I've probably done agile practices, you know, previously. Yeah. Like I've, gravitated towards agile because i think the way you know the collaboration the teamwork like that's how i've always worked so yeah uh, when i came across it and probably paul's testimony before kind of talks to this as well when you when you find it and it, and you see it um in its best form um it's a pleasure to work in and um i've never looked back never yeah, we have a saying going around. So I'm part of the Agile Practitioners Group um, at my work, and uh, that's how I got onto this. They they mentioned this meeting um, in there, and I should go check it out. And um, a good Scrum Master makes himself redundant, is what we keep saying. Yep. So I want to make myself redundant, I think. <laughs> it's not for the payout, it's for self-organization. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The team should be working so well that <laughs> you're you're not needed to do very much. Like you're just checking in and things like that, I guess. Yeah. Clearing the path. Yeah. So yeah, I'm keen to learn. Awesome source. Thanks for sharing, Luke. That's awesome. And I look forward to your form coming through. And it is, it is Luke, right? Because you've got Luke Ray and it's not Ray or is it yeah, Luke? Yeah, it's Luke. I get called Ray a lot. Don't don't ask me why. Luke's yeah. not a last name, but because i got two first names, I get it. But Yeah, I get it too. I get that a lot. I also get James Cameron a lot. A be lot worse of... namesakes out there. <laughs> oh, that's right. I could be called all sorts of things. All right. Awesome. Well, um, if there are no further questions, we can, we've gotten through what we need to get through. So I've sent through those links on the chat. Feel free to do what you need to do. If you get lost, you can go to the Scrum Craft website. There's a, 
the tab at the top called Mentor Beacon, um, and you can find everything in there anyway. Um, so if you don't keep the links or you haven't, you, you lose it somehow, um, you can always go to the website. Um, otherwise, DM, DM us, join the Slack channel, and you can just talk to anyone, and they'll point you in the right direction. Cool. Yeah, um, welcome, guys, and uh, please join the channel. I think uh, there are some people who are already part of this uh, space, and and uh, yeah, it will be even uh, easier for you to to do, join the uh, the particular channel there in that Slack. And um, I just want to thank uh, Jason one more time because. I understand that um, uh, running uh, uh, his own business, it's a very brave thing. So, uh, uh, and uh, maybe I get to that point at some, uh, at some time, but yeah, it's just, just so, so brave. And I believe it's uh, rewarding in a way. And um, uh, I've been through uh, several courses run by Jason and I believe he has quite a, uh, fully packed calendar with the uh, uh, events through the next months, so it might be uh, worth mentioning, Jason. Right? Yeah. Well, thank you for that, and thank you for your kind words as well. Um, yeah, I went full time in this business um, a couple of years back now, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been it's been a great journey. Um, I'm I'm looking at how how I now look at scaling the business and you know uh, meeting the demand and and that sort of thing as well so um what i wanted to highlight is that there are a few community meetups um that are that are coming up um so because there's a, a joint um adelaide agile community um and oops i've pushed the wrong button <laughs> i'll just bring this guy across just wonder what uh so if you if you've joined one of the communities but not the other for instance then um just know that this is a joint collaboration between agility at scale and adelaide agile community and i wanted to point out that there is a couple of meetups coming uh culture of code qualities next week um and uh ben's been kind enough uh to help us um by providing a platform for us to be able to share this in the Adelaide Agile community. And I've got one, I think, next two weeks away from now on Agile in HR as well. So that's another free event that you can join um, if you would like to come along. Um, there are certainly um, courses coming up. Um, do you know, actually, I'm pretty proud of this one, so I'm going to mention it. Um, so I become Australia's first authorized agile education provider for Scrum Inc. Um, and Scrum Inc is Jeff Sutherland's um, uh, company. Uh, and Jeff Sutherland is the co-author of Scrum, uh, the Scrum Guide, and was co-creator of Scrum. So um, I'm pretty excited to say that um, I've got a registered agile coaching course coming up in the evenings on the 25th of September um, as well. So if that's something of interest, um, please, you know, uh, reach out and I can, I can send you the details for that. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty, pretty excited to be involved with Scrum Inc and, uh, and, and a supporting partner um, from, uh, from the US for the courses that we're running here. Thanks, guys. Any final closure? Any final items, Alexi? Or are we pretty much ready to rock and roll? Yeah, I think we can wrap it up. And um, yeah, just just please try it. Uh, even if it's new, if you and you for uh, with a, within a agile space, and it's pretty much the program welcoming uh, everyone. And uh, at some point, Whoa. probably uh, might be students join us. Uh, it's uh, still uh, there are still some courses in in uh, local units uh, teaching people how to code. But probably there is no courses uh, uh, teaching people how to do a JavaScript. So that's why maybe it might be a next step in in a young professionals' career to to go through the program and achieve their goals. So yeah, just just uh, probably give it a shot and, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Awesome. Thank you. What's the dog what's your dog's name? Uh, 
because I need to say thank you to, to them uh, as well. It's Myla. Myla. Yeah. yeah, I need to feed him his <laughs> tablets, so probably it's the time. <laughs> Myla is approving of Jason and Alexi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. All right, guys, have a great night. And um, yeah, reach out if you've got any other questions. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.